Oh, my God. Good morning. Good God morning. I want to make sure I give this word because I know it's so necessary because some of you, I know you're probably facing a spiritual drought. I know a whole lot of us have been through so much. I want you to listen to this song because guess what? Heaven's rain is here. It's falling. It's falling. It's falling as it is. Pay attention to the words. I love it. Thank you. Yes, it is. That's for you this morning. It's been in my spirit. I said, I'm going to play that. That's for you. you got to know the rain is here. It's your season of rain in your spiritual drought. My God. Thank you, God. Yes, God. Yeah, God. Thank you, Jesus. Hear the sound. Hear the sound in your spirit. It's the sound of faith. It's God. Hallelujah. Yes, God. God, my God, you know, when I start to think about this topic, talking about the times that many of us have really, really tried to ask God, what are you doing? Well, guess what? I've got an announcement for you. Heaven's reign is here in your spiritual drought. Well, first of all, we've got to recognize I just love how I've been studying Zechariah. Let me turn there. Zechariah had made a great statement that I think that we all should be paying attention to during this spiritual drought because we can 
open our mouths and ask God for what we know that we have been faithful to him about and that we have been obedient about. I've been saying that over and over again. We can expect God. And many of you have a spiritual drought, and most of you who are leaders, and most of you who are being challenged, maybe it's a relationship, or maybe it's your finances or going through different stuff, and so you want the rain to fall. But I want you to look at Zechariah chapter 10, and he said, and he just pronounced the promises of the Lord in this chapter. In verse 1, he says, As ye of the Lord reign in the time of of the latter rain, for the Lord shall make bright clouds and give them showers of rain to every one grass in the field. And I really, really believe that God is doing that. So, yes, you may be facing a spiritual drought. Yes, you may be going through a time where you feel like the ministry is not doing what it needs to do or things are not coming out the way it needs to come out. And I remember years ago when I was preaching and I first started out in ministry, I found the time where I had a drought in my ministry. And most of that I soon learned that I had a lot of rebellion going on. I know I'm talking to somebody. I had a lot of rebellion going on. I had trouble in the marriage. I mean, there was things that I would say and do in the marriage that was not of God. And many things that I was being rebellious by those who was leading me, those who were speaking into my lives and training me up. And so there was rebellion. So I began to get a spiritual drought. I know I'm talking to somebody. I began to get a spiritual drought. Things were just not turning out the way I thought it would. Things started slowing up. You know, I wasn't going out no more preaching. I wasn't going out no more talking and sharing and evangelizing the way everything was how the kids say pop and back then. But what God was doing was showing me that this was a spiritual drought. Why? Because things needed to change within. You know I'm talking to somebody. God is responding to your drought right now as I'm talking to you. And many of us don't take an opportunity to see that we are in a wilderness. And what God, what God is trying to do is get us to come up to faith to know that this spiritual drought, he wants you to know that you don't have to go through the wilderness. You don't have to do all these 40 years. You don't have to do all these 40-day fasts. What you do have to do is repent. What you do have to do is take a spiritual assessment of your fruit to see really where you are. Jesus, it didn't take him no 40, how they say these, 40 years to get to one place to the point to the next. You know, it took him 40 days to make sure that he responded in faith when he went through the wilderness, okay? We need to make sure that we watch our grumbling, watch our complaining, watch who you're talking to, watch how you're talking about others. Make sure we pay attention to what God is speaking in your heart about what you already know ain't right, okay? I think it's very important for us to look at Psalms 1 and 2. Let's look at that real quick. And then I'm going to give you this message. I'm going to get off here. Psalms uh, 1 and 2 says, Blessed is a man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. And verse 2 says, But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doeth he meditate day and night. And here's verse 3. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. Yes, God. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. You know, one of the hardest things for leaders to do is really put ourselves in a position to realize that some things the devil is trying to hold us up with, and some things God is trying to show us it's us. Okay. Spiritual drought ain't no fun. At the same time, we've got to recognize when the enemy gets a peek in to see where you're headed, he's always got a plan to try to block you. The enemy looks for these moments of opportunity when he knows that you're about to expect God to do something supernatural. And so what he does is he tries to take that time and calculate on how he can study what you're doing. He's constantly watching you. We all are assigned to some, de- some demons assigned to us, okay? So he calculates, he strategizes, he studies you, and he look at these areas where you're weak at. He look at these things that he knows that he can get you to do. And so he starts drying up these places because you allow the gates to be open in these areas that you will not repent from and will not be obedient about. So he goes, okay, I'm going to use this. So these satanic attacks always are going to come when you're experiencing the season of fruitfulness. You're going to know that as soon as you start doing real, real well and thinking you got it all together and think that, you, that you're sin and the things that you the so easy to set you is all covered up under the blood and then here he go, well, I already know about that. I know about you doing this here and I know about your lie about that. I know what you're trying to do. I know what you've been saying about that one and lied about this. And so when you're experiencing these seasons of fruitfulness, 
This is when he comes to attack. And then when you take this step that, that you've made a decision that you're going to sow, you're going to sacrificially give, you're going to make sure that you serve, this is when he want to attack you too. And then there's another way he attacks us when we give this genuine time, the genuine time that we really, really, really want to make sure that God can see that we really want our hearts to be able to evangelize and touch and reach lives because now people are getting help. People are getting breakthrough. Family members are deciding they want to hear from heaven. And so now the enemy is going to come because now you're pulling these souls out of the fire. And then when we start offering up these serious intercessory prayers, like some of y'all are standing together with me in these nine days, this is when all hell break loose. I'll tell you during these few days, at least this is the third day here, I'm telling you, we ain't even got close to the fifth day, and I'm already fighting hell. But it ain't winning because I believe the Lord and not the devil. Okay? So when you're in this serious intercession time, this is when the enemy is going to come to make sure you believe that you're full of drought, that you have no fruit. The devil's crazy. He wants you to respond to this drought in a way that's going to lead you into a wilderness of depression. It's going to lead you in a place to say, what's the use? You throw your hands up and say, I don't even know how I'm going to get through this. And then he starts to put his foot on your neck. Why? Because now when you are leading, when you're trying to cleanse out all these things, leading in, uh, others and yourself in the place of righteousness, now he's going to bring up everything he possibly can to try to do a, how to say, slam dunk you. When you're really spending the time and praying and getting before God and telling him about the things that really, really have beset you so long, you want out. Okay, I want better. Okay, you're crying out to the Lord. But you got to remember one thing. God is a fruitful God. Let's turn to Lamentations real quick, and then I'm going to give you this closing remark so we can get off of here. Let's look at Lamentations. I just love it. We're going to look at Lamentations chapter 3. Uh, let's look at verse 21. It says, This I recall to my mind, therefore have I hope. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because of what? Because of his compassion fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore will I hope in him. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him. Here it is, 25, that wait for him to the soul that seeketh him. There it is. It is good that a man should both hope and quietly. Oh, my God. That's why I have to shut it all down. I got to know where to know that I've been talking and not my flesh. It is good good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. And then here's 27. It is good for a man that he bear the yoke in his shoe. Now, 28 is the one I want you to really pay attention to. He sent alone, my God, and keep it silent. Why? Because he had borne it upon him. What this is talking about, this is the hour that we got to know that the rain is here. Everything where the enemy has tried to dry up, the fruitfulness where we've tried to give out, and it seems like it's still not coming back. Well, because you born it, because you set in the fire and said, for God I live, for God I die, and these are the things that I want to grow up and be better and fruitful in me, this is how we all can conquer and fight the fight of faith. I don't want to preach. Mm, mm, mm. When I began to look at this message, I said, God, help me. But we got to be aware of the enemy's attack because one of his strongest desires is to have you to believe that God is not answering your prayer. He's crazy. God is not silent. He's not absent. He's forever present. He already know. And like I said in one of these messages already, he's meeting you and has already met you before you even got there. Because he already knew the beginning before the end. And so I'm going to close with this, talking about Lamentations 3 and 23, how faithful and true God is. You know, it may be the most difficult time in your life. It just may be. It may be the most dried up time in your life. Yes, it may be. Maybe you're just so tired of feeling that nothing is working out in the marriage, nothing is working out with the kids, nothing is working out on the job, the ministry looks like it's not coming through with anybody, people are not showing up, you know, and you can't seem to get these things to come out to do the way you expected them to do. And you did your very best, but yet you still got all these weapons of warfare that's after you like the ones I just described a few minutes ago. 
He don't want you to have the breakthrough because he knows when you have the breakthrough, God is going to hear from heaven, even now, as I said before, to make sure that he leads you out of this wilderness to guide you. Holy Spirit, you need to be calling on your angel, your guarding angel, calling on Jehovah Rapha, the one that healed you and for the things that hurt you. You need to be calling on Jehovah Shalom to be, for you to be at peace and know when he's talking to you. Amen. And so you got to be aware of the enemy's tactics. One of the things he wants you to be in this place, as I said before, is to use these tactics that I told you a few minutes ago, where you can have the feeling of this season, a time of unfruitfulness, where it looks like that every time you're trying to do something good or take two steps, she's got four or five steps pulling you back. Somebody's got their mouth on you. Somebody's got, oh, your money won't pay you. Somebody's doing something to try to make it look like you're the enemy when you're trying to help. I don't want to preach. But it may be very difficult for you right now. And it may be uh, the time in our lives where it's the most difficult for us to try to say we believe God for this drought, for this spiritual time that we can see is so low. Seems like I can't get a prayer through. Seems like God is not hearing me. Or uh, is God really going to ever answer me? You, you may be enduring your own little whirlwind, or you may be innocent in the situation that somebody has done something to you. And you, many of you are getting caught in some backlash of things that you don't know why. People have done things and now got you caught up in the middle. But I want you to know that you can know and feel, even though it may feel horrible, you may feel desperately alone in this thing, but God is with you. You've got to believe that. And your season for the rain has already fallen. Can you feel it? I know I can. I don't care. It may sound like hype from here to you, but I feel the rain. And you gotta believe that it is already raining where you at. You gotta believe it. But but believe me, as I'm speaking to you, one who's been there and done that. Believe me, this whirlwind, this challenge where it looks like it's dry, this whirlwind, this dry, this whirlwind where it looks like it's a temporary thing that looks like, seems like it's longer than temporary for you, you know, when you thought it was going to be over by now, you got to know that your faithful, caring God is seeing you and watering every pain and pulling back every one of the things that the enemy had tried to do to you. And guess what? The rain is bringing it forth. Everything that you trust the Lord for, you got the victory. Amen. You got the victory over every temptation. You got the victory over everything the enemy tried to take the glory from God for what he was using you for. He tried to take it from God. In everything, God must be glorified. So guess what? You will learn all types of ways that God is going to use you in this time, as I said a few minutes ago in Lamentation in verse 28. He that sitteth alone and keeps silence, because he hath borne it upon him, which means that now you're able to bear it, because God has already gave you the rain. You have conquered it. And so the drought has already dried up, and guess what? It's full of rain all over every situation that concerns you. Hallelujah. Come on, let the rain fall. I love you so much. I pray this message is blessing you. Please share the message. Father, I thank you, God. I thank you that in Jesus' name, that even now that one has heard me. Even now, Father, I thank you that you're going to help us as you have said in Lamentation chapter 3, that this I recall to my mind. Therefore, I have hope. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassion fell not. We thank you that your compassion is failing not. We thank you that we can wait on you and that we will sit and wait and wait on your answer because we know that your reign has already given us what we need in heaven on earth to do what you called us to do. In Jesus' name. God bless you. Enjoy the rest of your week. Please share the best.